And what I would like to do now is I would like to give you a little demo of how this works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to switch over to my PC here. Let me change mice here on the desktop. And this is what, oops, let me change it so I can actually see my computer over here. This is what WinLink Express or RMS Express. So if you, if you look on the uh, start menu, you can see RMS Express. It's got this purple and gray checkerboard icon um, that gets installed. And so the application is actually called RMS Express. However, once you launch the application, it calls it WinLink Express up here in the upper left corner. Now, is that confusing? Yep. Did we write it? Nope. The folks who wrote it, those guys are amazing. Um, and they, they do some absolutely incredible work. Um, so we've got our WinLink Express application. Let's take a little tour of a couple of things to see here. First of all, you'll notice I've got my call sign up here in the upper left-hand corner. Uh, there's a bunch of different options here along the top. Uh, over here on the left-hand side, there's a little uh, new message button. This is that uh, compose a message button. So I'll go ahead and click on that. And it opens up what is pretty familiar to us. It looks like an email message. I mean, there's nothing really fancy here. Um, I mentioned earlier that here in the to field, you can either put a real world email address and it is a good idea to send yourself a email uh, through WinLink the first time that you sign on to here. That way um, your commercial email account gets um, uh, highlighted so that, so that it'll allow traffic to pass uh, directly in because WinLink will tend to reject messages from the outside if you haven't uh, communicated with them. So it's a good idea to go ahead and uh, send a message to yourself, to your real world email address. But you can also send one to somebody's call sign. So in this case, I'm going to send one to my to my colleagues here. I'm going to send it to uh, uh, switch back over to the right keyboard here. W0DHG. I'm just going to type in his address. I'm going to hit the tab key and look at that. It auto capitalizes that email address and puts the uh, semicolon in there. Now, if I want to add a couple of other folks on here, I'll also send it to NR6V. That would be Dan. And I will also send it to David KK6DA. And there we go. So we can use the two field, the CC field, just like you're you're used to. I'm going to say uh, I'm going to say uh, hello world as my first message, and I'm going to say hello from the class, and I'm going to sign it with my call sign W6AH. Um, you can put anything that you need to in the message. We would suggest not sending attachments, although you can send attachments, but remember a lot of this is gonna go via RF. And so bandwidth is really limited. Um, WinLink kind of came about a lot for those of us um, who do offshore passages on, on boats. And it was a way to send communications while you're at sea. And uh, those, uh, those communications were really allowing for very nice, uh, very nice separation. Uh, questions coming into the chat is, uh, what is the separation between the addresses? Uh, you can use commas uh, and uh, just do comma separated, comma space, and that will allow you to have uh, multiple addresses. It actually inserts a semicolon uh, in there is what, it, is what it's really in, inserting. So let's see, now I've got my message. It's all composed, it's ready to go. So what are we gonna do next? Next, we're gonna come up here and we're going to, instead of sending the message, there's, there's a lot of tools up there that's available to you, but, but instead of sending the message, we're gonna post it to the Outbox. And there's a link right here at the top that says post to Outbox. And I go ahead and do that and nothing happened, uh, but something did happen. Over here in the left-hand side, uh, in my system folders, you can see there's my outbox and it now has a one next to it. If I click on it, there is that message that's about to be sent out, but it hasn't gone anywhere yet. It's still queued up in my outbox. In a little while, we're going to do a demonstration that'll show you why this is a really good idea if you're using WinLink as part of an emergency communications net. Um, so you can pass traffic in order. All right, so I've got it in my outbox. Next, I'm going to come up here and find that open session button. Here's the little drop down next to it. And notice there are all of these different options. Telnet wing link, packet wing link, uh, Pactor, Vara HF, Vara FM, Iridium Go. Yeah, you can even send wing link messages via satellite phones using hmm. the 
Iridium network. How cool is that? Mm-hmm. The next section under there is uh, peer-to-peer options. There's a bunch of different, a lot of these are repeated, um, but in the peer-to-peer section, here's our uh, RF only, our radio only, and then our Telnet post office. But we're going to come all the way back up here to the top, and we're going to select Telnet with link right there at the top. I'll go ahead and select that. And then I will click that open session button. It's right here. I click open session and there's that special little window that comes up. Remember there's the settings button. If we had any settings to set, there's nothing to set. When you do Telnet, it's ready to go out of the box. It's all ready. Um, and then the start. So I'm gonna click the start button here in three, two, one, click. And if the demo gods are with me, we see the handshake that's actually happening. That message just disappeared disappeared out of my out box and the message went out. You'll notice if you look at the text that's in here, you'll notice, I mean, there's lots of text and stuff that's all in there, but one of the things that's kind of interesting is right here, notice you can see WL2K, that's the gateway that I happen to be connecting to, DE, remember, just like regular, like in CW or other different formats, DE from W6AH, and then it's got my grid square, and that uh, you entered in your grid square during your setup. The rest of this is all the handshake that's going on. So yes, in fact, at the end of your transmission, you do hand off your amateur radio call sign, so you are in compliance with the FCC rules. All right, so I got my message, and hopefully by this point, my esteemed colleagues have uh, (laughs) responded with some kind of hello at this point. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just click start again. And this is the same as like saying send and receive. And if the demo gods are with me, um, when it comes back in, I'm going to click back over into my inbox. Uh, Hopefully. Oops, it looks like I do not have any messages yet. Maybe my esteemed colleagues will will respond. I'll click start again. This is going to go. We're just slow. We're slow. Come on, guys. We're live on the internet. We're doing these demo things. Hey, uh, Dave, did you get the email? Did it come into your message? Um, yeah, I, I did, but I'm not sending because I have some demos to go out when I do my oh, demonstration. Okay. Okay. So I was hoping that Dan or, or David would uh, yeah. okay. send them out. You send it? Okay, let me do one more time. Another, another thing to point out on the, the screen there, um, as you see, there's a message ID at the top of the, the message that Chris is showing in his inbox. Each message that goes out will be identified with a specific message identifier and allows you to track it. Um, look, there's some messages coming there we out. Go. Throw them back to, to Chris there. But there are, is a message, there is a tracking for each individual email. And we'll show you a little later on how you can actually go to the WinLink website and track those messages and see who they came from, where they went to, and so on and so forth. And Chris, you've got one from me now. Oh, very nice. Look, I, I just got the one in from Dan. I will hit uh, start again, and that should bring in the other message. There we go, from KK6DA. So so Dan, uh, Dan sent me the message back right here, and let's just have a look at it. Um, it's got the message ID right here at the top, the date it's coming in from NR6V to W6AH. The source is NR6V download from, uh, and he just wrote in, received. Uh, notice the contents, the, the, the traffic that we're passing back and forth. Very minimal, very small to be able to, to do that. So that is the kind of nuts and bolts of just sending and receiving an email. And again, in this case, we just used Telnet because it was an easy way to kind of get up and started. We're gonna do some more with, with RF as the class progresses. 